18 years ago, a tower suddenly appeared in the sky among the clouds and flashes of thunderstorm from pink energy, and with it came the gate. Monsters poured out of the gate into the streets of the city. Huge snakes, flying monsters, creatures that look like demons. But besides the monsters, warriors also appeared from the gate. This is a small handful of people with superhuman abilities. These are the players. They became the hope of humanity and emerged as a new force and were ready to challenge evil. The game economy. In the realities of the new world, players have become a symbol of wealth and an object of envy. The dark-haired guy telling all this was standing with suitcases on the threshold of the guild office. This guy wasn't elected. He was met by a man in a suit who told him to put food on that table. The guy apologized for being late, smiling at the customer. He wished the customers a pleasant appetite. After that, he was on a moped at a traffic light in a traffic jam. He raised his head and looked at the screen with the image of the player. He raised the glass in his helmet in amazement. Another South Korean, born hero, Yu Seok Woo, was depicted on the scoreboard. He has unique abilities. The guy was staring at the screen with his mouth open. Yu Seok Woo stands and exhales smoke from his mouth. Blue energy swirls on his raised hand. He has unique abilities. It was like he owned cheat keys. He soars into the air, and an ice storm hits the monsters in front of him. He is the most outstanding of all superhumans. He is the one who has been compared to a monster. Yu Seok Wu freezes all the monsters gathered around him. A glass is lowered into the eyes of the guy studying the screen. The driver of the car standing behind him angrily shouts at him, the green light is already on, what are they worth? The guy starts apologizing to the driver. Late at night, he parks his moped under the light of a lantern. Then he notices that his mailbox is full. He runs to him with his mouth open, pulls out the envelopes. He studies the incoming correspondence. Credit, medical fees, it's at school. He exhales, thinking that this is what he expected. He comes home and says he's here. He is greeted by a dark-haired girl who is glad to see him and says that he has done a good job. He asks about why the girl is still awake. She says she did her homework and laughs. He asks if mom is sleeping. The girl said that her mother had just fallen asleep. She was sleeping better than usual today. The guy talks about how relieved he is. The guy also continues, saying that he should give his mother a massage. The girl brings him a cake with candles with the numbers 18 in it and says happy birthday with a smile. The guy is amazed to ask where she got the money for the cake. Had she spent the money he had given her on new clothes? She answers what he says. She has a lot of money too. If he doesn't have a cake, then he'll eat it all by himself. The girl says that he knows that she loves chocolate cake. She bought it at a very famous store. The guy looks at the girl and sees that her clothes are all shabby. He calls his sister Yu John. The girl asks what. The guy pats her on the head and says thank you to her. Thanks to her, she can even eat a cake on her birthday. Yu John laughs and asks him if he can read the letter before starting the cake. The guy agrees and says he will read her letter first. He opens an envelope sealed with a heart. He pulls a sheet out of the envelope. His eyes widen in shock. The girl, seeing his reaction, laughs. This is a player's invitation from the player's association. He looks at the sheet in surprise, which is trembling in his hands. He can't say a word. He screams in shock that he is a player. His voice is trembling. The girl wipes away tears of joy and laughs. Yu John says that she wanted to surprise him, so she pulled him out of the mailbox. She throws her arms around the guy's neck and shouts congratulations to him. Smiling, he hugs Yu Jong to him. He thinks with tears in his eyes about what happened. He did it. Now he can change their whole lives. He comes into the room to his sleeping mother. He looks at her and thinks that now if only he can find that thing. In the Korean Players Association, the guy is standing in front of the entrance. He looks around the huge building in amazement, trembling with anticipation and standing with his mouth open. He thinks that he's finally. He closes his eyes and thinks that it's not the time to give in to emotions. This is just the beginning of his journey. A girl with a folder in her hands tells him that he is doing well. He's a Kim gi player. He laughs and thanks the girl. The girl says that if he says the information window, the player's information will appear. She suggests that he try to tell her. He says the information window. He sees the information window and exclaims wow in amazement. He's a level 1 player, but his unique abilities are questionable. He thinks about what it means. He asks about the question marks next to the line with unique abilities. The girl opens her eyes wide in amazement. She shouts to Kim Kai Kaio in a trembling voice that she congratulates him. He has unique abilities. The questions mean that they have not yet been identified. Kim Kai Kai looks at the information window in amazement. He is amazed that this is true. He has unique abilities. He stands and shivers, thinking that he can't stop shaking. The girl raises her fist triumphantly, shouting that this is the owner of unique abilities. Then, with a smile, she tells Kim Kai Kai to calm down. She continues, saying that his coach will come soon and explain everything in detail. Then someone gets into their dialogue. The girl turns around, addressing Mr. Coach that he has already come. But then she realizes that the player in front of her is Yu Siak Wu. 
and he screams about it with his mouth wide open. Kim Kai Kai is also shocked to think that the player Yu Seok Woo is standing in front of him. He says that if he is allowed, he can guide this gentleman. Kim Kai Kai points at himself in amazement, trembling and asking what is being said about him. Yu Seok Woo says yes, he didn't intentionally, but it so happened that he overheard their conversation. Yu Seok Woo says that Kim Ki Kai has unique abilities. He stands with his eyes wide open in amazement. The girl thinks about it, saying that according to the rules it is generally impossible. Kim Kai Kai stands there and realizes that he is shaking again. But the girl waves her hand and says she thinks it's okay this time. Her authority is enough for that, so don't worry. She's not an ordinary manager, and a real professional with 10 years of experience. Yu Seok Woo thanks her. He leads Kim Kai Kai to the portal area. He exclaims in amazement that he is in front of the entrance to the tower, in front of the portal. Yu Seok Woo invites Kim Kai Kai to go there. He agrees. His eyes are burning with determination. They enter the portal, Yu Seok Woo tells Kim Kai Kai not to worry. He stammers and answers yes. Their crossing causes the monsters on the other side to turn around. They appear in a forest clearing, with many small goblins frozen in front of them. Kim Ki Kai asks about the fact that there are always so many monsters on the ground floor, seeing the number of creatures meeting them. Yu Seok Woo replies that he has heard that sometimes there are overlaps with time and monsters accumulate. It's the first time he's seen this either. Kim Kai Kai shouts at him in shock that isn't this a huge problem. He pulls out a sword and says that on the contrary it's even better, in which case he will be able to explain everything a little faster. He asks Kim Kai Kai if he knows about the 100 goblins test. Kim Kai Kai replies that the results were plausible enough, but the test was banned because of its danger. Yu Seok Woo says these words are true. This test was aimed at players below the 10th level to identify their abilities. The player's potential is measured if he kills 100 goblins without using skills in a certain time. For example, the timer is detected. Yu Seok Woo, rushing into the attack, says that if a person completes a task in 4-5 to five hours, he becomes an advanced player. He is with ease. It sweeps past enemies, leaving behind bursts of energy. If a person copes in 2-3 to three hours, then a player of a rank level. And if it takes an hour, then we can say that the player has high rank abilities. Kim Kai Kai holds his weapon in shock and thinks that the attack he saw is amazing. Yu Seok Woo continues, saying that finally, the time for the owner of unique abilities is 10 minutes. He freezes his enemy. Kim Kai Kai opens his eyes in amazement and thinks that this is why the owner of unique abilities is simply amazing. Yu Seok Woo dealt with a hundred goblins in 47 seconds. Kim Kai Kai is shocked to ask again that a high-ranking player is given an hour, and he is given 10 minutes. Yu Seok Woo replies that this is something that ordinary players have been trying to achieve for several years and those with unique abilities can master in a few months. So the growth rate and their potential are beyond imagination. Yu Seok Woo asks Kim Kai Kai if he knows the Angel Guild. He replies that yes, he has heard that there is a very young ranker in this guild. Yu Seok Woo says these are the right words. Most of the guild members pass the goblin test in less than three hours. But Yu Seok Woo plans to create a guild far superior to Angel's Guild. And for that, he needs capable players, especially those with unique abilities like them. Kim Kai Kai listens in amazement. Yu Seok Woo continues, saying that for now he hopes that he will go beyond his own limits more than once, and someday they will meet again in the tower. Yu Seok Woo defrosted the goblin and explained that he had said too much. He turns to Kim Kai Kai and asks him if they can start his first hunt. He shouts at Tom to strain his legs and back. The goblin opens its mouth threateningly and begins to growl. Yu Seok Woo shouts at Kim Kai Kai that he should try to snatch the goblin axe with his eyes. The monster rushes at him, raising his weapon to attack. Kim Kai Kai looks at his enemy with determination. He thinks about trying to change his life. Five years later, two people are standing in the forest. The goblin looks at the weapon in front of him in amazement. The guy with glasses is smiling. A dark-haired guy with a shield and an axe approaches him from behind and apologizes for being late. The guy with glasses turns around and tells Tom that he saw something funny. Another guy rushes at him with a sword. He swings and falls wearily to one knee, sticking the sword into the ground. The guy with the shield and sword tells his companion to look at how that guy is out of breath. This is the very return challenge that has become popular again. It will be difficult to kill a hundred goblins. The guy with glasses says he thought so too. Kim Kai Kai, who turned out to be the guy, shouts out the information window. The scoreboard appears, but what was written there made him very angry. He received an invitation from the tower at the age of 18. Kim Kai Kai punches the ground and screams in despair. The guys watching him shrug in incomprehension. Kim Kai Kai also turned out to be a chosen one with unique abilities. Kim Kai Kai is lying on the ground, clutching his head with his hands. But five years later, it takes him an hour to destroy at least one goblin. 
who knew there were such players. He is still level 1 and his unique abilities are marked with question marks. One swing cleaves the goblin's stomach. He screams and spits blood. The guy who attacked him pulls the sword aside. He exhales. A group of four guys is standing in a clearing where the bodies of defeated monsters are lying around. They're all great. And the guide, too. They all did a good job. The guys reply that everyone has raised their level. The blonde man says that goblins are easy for him now. It feels like he's only killed a couple, and his level has already risen. He is told that the low level can be raised quickly. Their leader says that then they will go up to the second floor tomorrow. He tells his companions that they will see each other at the entrance in the morning. Those readily respond to eat. He leaves, and they look at him and discuss whether their companion is really so famous. Of course he's famous, they've heard of him. One of the guys asks about the reason for such fame. The guy with the blonde hair says there are a few rumors going around. The first is that he has unique abilities. The dark-haired guy screams in shock if it's true. The blonde man replies that it's just a rumor. If that were true, he would be here. And that's right. And the blonde one also heard that Kim gi Kayu, who is in question, is the first from the bottom of all the players. The dark-haired man asks again in shock, not realizing that there is also a ranking from below. The blonde man replies that he is not even a ranker. Everyone is whispering in the corners, but no one can deny it. The blonde continues, saying that this guide has one nickname among the players. Kim gi Kayu is a player who cannot level up. Kim Kai Kai walks through the forest and thinks that when he finishes working as a guide, he comes to this place, a remote corner on the ground floor, where other players do not look in. He's been on the lowest floor the longest, so this is his secret place. He's leaning back against a tree. He turns his head to the side. He sees a monster appear in the air. Only one goblin appears here every day. Kim Kai Kai looks at the enemy, pulling out a sword from his bosom. He thinks that even if he strikes quickly before the creature notices him, it won't be an easy hunt. He comes out from behind a tree and looks at his opponent's back. He's walking on the ground. The goblin hears this sound. Kim Kai Kai readily clutches a sword with both hands. The goblin's eyes widen. Kim Gi Kai swings his sword, but the goblin manages to expose his weapon. Kim Kai Kai clenches his teeth while holding his enemy's stick. They begin to fight, alternately waving their weapons. Kim Kai Kai cannot defeat a goblin. He thinks that the battle will still be very difficult for him. The Players Association Kim Kai Kai thinks that it takes him one hour to destroy one goblin. If you sell the extracted crystal, it's 20,000 won. If you subtract the cost of the potion, Kim Kai Kai exhales in frustration. He won't get any profit. Then he notices a door opening up ahead. Kim Kai Kai greets Theo, who greets back. Kim Kai Kai asks if Theo has finished his work and is told that he has. Kim Kai Kai tells Tom that he is working late. Theo scratches the back of his head irritably. He asks Kim Kai Kai for forgiveness, but he does not understand what this is about. He looks after his departing comrade in amazement. Kim Kai Kai asks T. Shik Hyun about something happening at Theo's. T. Shik Hyun is the chief manager of the conductor department. He tells Kim Kai Kai that he has come. He stammers a little and tells Kim Kai Kai that the guests he worked with today will be handled by Theo from tomorrow. He asks in amazement why. Everything was fine. T. Shik Hyun looks at him in frustration. He replies that they seem to have heard rumors. Kim Kai Kai understands everything and silently purses his lips. He is disappointed to think about how this is related to the work of the conductor. Well, basically nothing can be done, because it's true. There is a question on TV whether it is true that the Angela Guild has reached the 75th floor. Kim Kai Kai's eyes widen in amazement. When asked, they answer that yes, that's right. They announced that they would conquer the 75th floor, which had been idle until now. A squad departure ceremony is scheduled to be held near the gate in Seoul tomorrow morning. An amazing sight awaits all viewers. Kim Kai Kai comments that everywhere they talk about their players. These are ordinary people who did not come close to the tower. They continue on TV, saying that for the first time in a long time there will be something to watch. A great hero has finally appeared in South Korea. T. Shik Hyun says that just the players are kind of idols. The gate can be opened anywhere. Anyone can become a player. The TV continues, saying that it's great if the Angel Guild really manages to get through the 75th floor. T. Shik Hyun says he thinks it will be like this. There is a question on TV about what news will be next. Kim Kai Kai looks at the screen and thinks that this is news from some world far away from him. The next news is that an s rank gate has appeared in the USA. Currently, the American government is going to make an official request for assistance to the Korean Association. They promised decent remuneration to all participants. This event coincided with the announcement of the Angela Guild, which may cause conversations among the players. Kim Kai Kai thinks that he is a real player, but this world is so far away from him. They say on TV that if we are talking about the s rank gate, then in the past, the speech is interrupted by Kim Kai Kai turning off the TV. 
Ti Shik Hyun, amazed, asks Kim Kai Kai why he turned it off. He was watching. Kim Kai Kai replies that it's simple. Ti Shik Hyun hands him an envelope, saying that he did a good job today and here is the payment for the day. Kim Kai Kai thanks him. Ti Shik Hyun continues, saying that about Theo. He looks cold, but actually feels guilty in front of him, so you shouldn't be offended by him. Kim Kai Kai says with a smile that it's not Theo's fault. There is no need to apologize for this. T. Shik Hyun replies that it is true. Tomorrow, let Kim Kai Kai come early to take over the shift. He clicks the mouse, saying that instead of that job, there was something. A request has been received in the name of Kim Kai Kai. He asks again in amazement. Later, he introduces himself to Kim Song Pil's boyfriend. Kim Kai Kai says that he is also very pleased to meet you and shakes hands, saying that he is Kim Kai Kai's guy. Kim Sung Pil says he has heard a lot about him from Siak Woo. Kim Kai Kai pronounces the name Siak Woo in amazement. He asks Kim Sung Pil about who Siak Woo is. Kim Song Pil replies that they are cousins. Kim Gi Kai remembers Siak Woo. Kim Kai Kai asks Kim Song Pil if he is the leader. To begin with, he represents the team members. He says yes. Team members Yoon Yi Won, Yoon Sung, Wu and the only girl, Kim Han introduce themselves. They greet Kim Kai Kai. He tells them that they probably already know that they need five days, starting today, to go through the training floor. Kim Kai Kai says he believes that each of the team has spent enough time preparing for this. He would explain everything else to them along the way. Later in the evening, when the sun has almost set, Kim Kai Kai says that's enough for today. He will prepare a halt. Kim Hanul asks him if he needs help. Kim Kai Kai tells her that no, you don't have to. If they have already set up tents, they can rest. Everyone praises the food cooked by Kim Kai Kai, saying that the smell is excellent and the dish is very tasty. He says there's still a little bit left before they're ready, they can sit down. Yoon Yi Won sits down and addresses Kim Kai Kai, asking if it is true that his level is not rising. Kim Song Pil shouts at him sternly, saying that such a question is not tactful. He replies with a smile that it is true. He says to ask if you're curious about something, but the players are hesitant to do so. Kim Kai Kai puts food in bowls, asking about how they are hunting today. The team responds that it wasn't as difficult as they thought. There are only a few scratches left. Wounds can still be cured with a potion. Kim Kai Kai says that the goblins on the first floor have poor weapons and their movements are very noticeable. He continues by saying that the players can consider this a training session before the upcoming battles. They should continue to always keep their eyes open and raise their level, then they will succeed, unless they meet the Guardian. In response, he is asked about the Guardian. This is the patron spirit that is on every floor. The boss is a monster that is hunted by entire guilds or large teams. In other words, a strong monster that is the keeper of the gate. Kim Kai Kai says that you can get a lot of experience points and good items, but the Guardians are dangerous. Low-level players can't handle these alone. The team listens to him in amazement. Kim Kai Kai, seeing their reaction, laughingly tells them not to be too scared. They monitor the regeneration cycle. In addition, there is a guild specializing in hunting, and the guardians of the lower floors can be quickly destroyed. On the contrary, sometimes it is even difficult to meet him. The fourth floor of the tower, the border zone of the forest. The monster runs away, but the creature stumbles over a rock and falls. The goblin turns around in fright, looking at his pursuer. He is trembling with fear. The goblin is dealt with in a couple of seconds. A huge orc devours its prey, eyes burning with fire, smoke billowing from its mouth. Training day 2. The second floor of the tower. The orc was already waiting for them. He was big and the person keeping the diary was a little scared. But the orc moved slower than the goblins, so it was not so difficult to defeat him. Day 3. Third floor. A crowd of goblins and orcs appeared. They won't be able to become normal allies anyway. The idea of the guide sparking a battle between them over some kind of stone was simply amazing. Also, thanks to him, it was possible to increase your level easily and safely. Now he understands why Seok Wu Hyun recommended Kim Gi Kai so strongly. The same one notices that Kim Song Pil is busy with something and asks about what. He replies that he is writing a diary. After receiving the invitation, he writes it every day. Who knows, maybe he'll become a runner and write an autobiography. Kim Kai Kai laughingly replies that he understood everything. They only have to hold out for tomorrow, and the next test will be the fifth floor. Players want to learn their class faster. Kim Hanul wipes her face with a towel and asks about which class she will come across. Hyun Yi Won tries to say something while brushing his teeth, but nothing is clear. They tell him to brush his teeth first and then talk. Kim Kai Kai listens to them and looks at the bonfire in frustration. He raises his eyes to the sky, thinking about the fifth floor. There are also orcs and goblins on the fourth floor. They differ in slightly greater speed and strength. Kim Kai Kai says they will do the same trick as they did yesterday. Kim Song Pil swings his sword with a shout. He's attacking an orc. Other members of his team also rush into battle. Kim Kai Kai is watching them. 
he opens his eyes wide. In front of him there is a team battle with orcs. Everyone participates in the battle, enduring the onslaught of monsters. An approaching sandstorm is visible in the distance. Kim Kai Kaio is watching her with his eyes closed. He is amazed that he sees the wind with dust. He thinks about the fact that the day of the Guardian's appearance is not today. Kim Kai Kaio clutches his sword, thinking that this is a bad sign. He shouts to the team that it's time for everyone to take cover. They need to finish faster. During the long life of a guide, Kim Kai Kai realized one thing. He grabs the bag, thinking that real learning is not a game. Kim Kai Kai turns around in amazement, hearing a heart-rending scream. Yuni One holds onto his injured knee, screaming in pain. An orc approaches him with a growl, raising a club. Kim Song Pil is calling his friend. The slightest carelessness. The orc in front of Yuni One is struck down with a single blow to the neck. The guy is stained with blood splashes. Kim Kai Kai understands that the team is having difficulties, and the slightest inattention can cause the death of the entire team. Kim Kai Kai looks at the approaching storm. Kim Kai Kai thinks that please. In the storm, the outlines of an orc that had previously eaten another are visible. Kim Kai Kai was not disappointed by his foreboding. The guardian and other orcs emerged from the storm. Kim Kai Kai looks at the enemies in shock. He shouts to the team to get ready to escape. And he throws out a balloon, from which fog is pouring out. It envelops the guardian and the orcs. Kim Kai Kai shouts to the team to hurry up. They escape, but they are weakened and injured. Kim Kai Kai says they need to take advantage of the moment and break away from the Guardian and the Orcs. Kim Song Pil asks about where they should go. Kim Kai Kai replies that they need to follow him first. He knows a place to hide. They run into a cave in the rock. They're all trying tiredly to catch their breath. The team doesn't understand what it was. It seems they were attacked by a huge Orc. Kim Kai Kai replies that he thinks it's the keeper of the fourth floor. He doesn't understand why he showed up. We need to observe the situation. It's good that they have enough supplies, you can ask for help. Here Kim Kai Kai is shouted that Hanul is not coming to his senses. The girl is lying unconscious on the ground. She is poisoned by goblin poison. Kim Kai Kai replies that there is no need to worry. With the antidote, Hanul will recover quickly. He opens his eyes wide in amazement when he realizes that there is no antidote in the back. He remembers that when they were running away, he did not close the backpack and the antidote fell out. No matter how much he was in a hurry then, how could he have made such an elementary mistake? He needs to calm down. He has to stay calm. He tells the remaining guys that he will ask for help and come back. They are shocked by Kim Kai Kaio's intentions to leave them, saying that it is very dangerous. Kim Kai Kaio asks them not to worry. He went through the training floor many times, even to the point of nausea. He would go up the hill and send a sign that they needed help. Kim Kai Kaio says that even though he looks like this, he is the first player in the world with the first level. Kim Gi Kaiu sits behind a rock, looking at the orc in front, and thinks that this is how he told them, but, but because of the guardian, the direction of movement of the monsters has changed, so it is impossible to predict their location. Kim Kai Kaiu is already looking at two orcs. He understands that he needs to try another way. There is no mistake, there is only one house shell left. Kim Kai Kaiu thinks that at the current speed he will reach the hill in three minutes. We need to quickly fire a flash and return to the cave. Kim Kai Kaiu is thinking about not meeting the guardian. Not the keeper. There's a keeper landing right in front of him. Kim Kai Kai screams in horror and amazement. The guardian strikes him, causing him to fly off to the side, crashing into the mountain, causing stones to fly to the side. He screams in pain, spitting out blood. He throws a gas cylinder at the keeper. He looks at the monster smiling through the gas, realizing that he needs to leave faster. He grabs the gun. Kim Kai Kai is not the type to fall for the same trick twice. He raises his hand up and fires a flare. Kim Kai Kai turns away from the monster, realizing that first he needs to run as far as possible. He needs to calm down. There is no one who knows this place better than him. There must be some way. Then Kim Kai Kai notices the door to the fifth exam floor. He thinks that he would like to rush there without thinking about anything, but he can't do it because of his family. After all, only death awaits him there with his first level. Kim Kai Kai, trying to catch his breath, stops at the door, not understanding what to do. He leans on the door. His clothes are torn and tattered. He wonders how he got here. It is difficult to reach the fifth floor even from the fourth level. Kim Kai Kai realizes that this is just an escape to nowhere. The guardian catches up with him. Kim Kai Kai hears him and his eyes widen in horror. He clenches his teeth. He is faced with a choice between an exact death and a possible death. Kim Kai Kai screams that he will look at what is there. He's going to get over that damn barrier. And he'll find out what's there. Kim Kai Kai walks through the door. He has announced that he has entered the first examination hall. The player is being checked. He fulfilled the conditions. Kim Kai Kai announces that he has entered the first examination hall. The player's data is being checked. He has untested abilities. He fulfilled the conditions. Kim Kai Kai is lying senseless on the ground. 
The difficulty level has been significantly reduced. Kim Kai Kaiu raises his head wearily. He is given his first test, a goat hunt. Kim Kai Kaiu gets up from the ground, looking at the goat and at the information window. He doesn't understand what's going on. He stabs the goat in the neck. He is informed that he has passed the test. He gets a class. He has untested abilities. Kim Kai Kaiu takes the sword out of the goat's neck. Kim Kai Kaiu is informed that he is receiving a reward. A perfect sweep. The quality of the reward has been improved. Kim Kai Kaiu holds a sword in amazement, thinking that he expected to die here. And this is just a goat. He asks if that's all for sure. Something catches his attention here. Kim Kai Kaiu notices swirls of black energy around him, which envelop him. He looks at the black energy around him in shock, not understanding what is happening. Kim Kai Kaiu hears a voice about who he is. The same one looks around, not understanding where he is. Kim Kai Kaiu is asked about being his master. Kim Kai Kaiu thinks that this is a boy's voice. He doesn't understand what the master means. In response, words are heard saying that this dumbass, who can't even answer, is his master. Kim Kai Kaiu asks what his interlocutor is talking about at all. They tell him that they have been waiting for so long. Okay, Kim Kai Kaiu should choose a name for him sooner. He asks again, startled. He is told that the name. He tells Tom to establish a connection with him. Kim Kai Kaiu is informed that Ego has requested to establish a connection with him. Kim Kai Kaiu is asked if he will establish a connection with the Ego. He has to choose a name for the Ego. Kim Kai Kaiu opens his eyes. A man and a girl are standing in front of him. They pay attention to him, realizing that he has come to his senses. They cheerfully shout to him that he has woken up. He calls his sister in a trembling voice. She shouts at him that she pressed the call button. Kim Kai Kaiu thinks about how he was found unconscious on the fifth floor two weeks ago. T. Shik Hyun told me what happened. Guild players noticed a flash in front of the entrance to the fifth floor. They saw the enraged guardian, drove him to a dead end, but he managed to escape. He started to worry about the escaped guardian, but calmed down a bit when he heard that Mr. Song Pil and the entire team had been rescued. All the team members brought him bakas, a health drink. Kim Kai Kai was very pleased with them. A little later, he was standing and talking on the phone with his mother. He walks down the corridor, rolling an IV drip behind him and telling her that according to the doctors, several more tests should be done and she can be discharged. He asks mom what she's apologizing for. He laughs and says that he is not a child. Mom should not worry and relax. He says that there is no need to worry. The treatment fee was covered by insurance. Of course, he knows that the most important thing is health. He asks about what Yu John is listening to next to him. He tells his sister that she can no longer come and let her look after her mother at home. He will call when they tell you the exact date of discharge. Kim Kai Kai thinks that he has passed the fifth floor. He expected something else, and his level is still one. Kim Gi Kai clutches the phone in anger. Then a ring appears on his hand. However, now, the ring on Kim Kai Kai's hand is glowing red. He goes through the portal to where the players train. They all turn to him in surprise. The players stare at him in amazement. Kim Kai Kai walks among them. They look at him and think that he is really so famous. He walks past the players. One of the players asks why Kim Gi Kaiu is so famous. The other player replies that there are rumors about him, about a guide who can't raise his level. The third player answers them that it was Wen. Doesn't he know another reason for Kim Kai Kaiu's popularity? The speaker was asked what the reason was. They answer that Kim Kai Kaiu is the killer of the tutorial. Kim Kai Kaiu throws his backpack on the ground. He freezes in front of a horde of monsters. He holds up his hand with a ring, from which energy flows. In Kim Kai Kaiu's hand, a sword materializes, with an eye sign on the hilt, from which energy emanates. Kim Kai Kaiu, smiling, turns his sword back to attack. He takes off briskly, shocking all the monsters, and easily destroys them in a matter of seconds. A red stream of light emanates from the sword in his hands. Kim Gi Kaiu continues to smash the monsters one by one. He wonders if his sword needs to choose a name. Kim Kai Kaiu names him Lu. The sword likes his name. Kim Kai Kaiu easily deals with all the goblins, of which there were at least several dozen. An information window appears in front of him, which says that his level is 1. Class, Ego Partner. Unique Abilities, Connection, Skills, Fusion. Level 7 Lu, Strength 18, Dexterity 18, Physical Strength 7, Magical Powers 7, Skills, Transformation into an Accessory. Lu's level increases to 8 after the battle. Kim Kai Kaiu says, looking at his bag filled to the top with crystals, and says that it seems like only yesterday he was trembling at the sight of orcs, and now he is collecting all these crystals. He asks Lu if he's right. His snake-shaped ring begins to glow red. A month ago, Kim Kai Kaiu studies the information window, which says that his level is 1. Class, Ego Partner. Unique Abilities, Connection, Skills, Fusion. He understands that he is the partner of the Ego. Kim Kai Kaiu happily realizes that it was not a dream. He did the right thing by coming to the tower right after the hospital. 
He remembers his sister asking in anger where Kim Kai Kaya was going if he almost died. Kim Kai Kaya thinks that if he goes home, Yu Zhang will swear. Kim Kai Kaya understands that for the first time in five years there have been changes in the information window. He cannot just sit there. He clenches his fist. Kim Kai Kaya asks about how to connect with this ego. He rubs his chin thoughtfully. Then an idea comes to him. He begins to wave his arms convulsively, and stretching out his hand shouts a connection. But nothing happens. Kim Kai Kaya notices that his shoelace is untied. He sits down on the ground, and holding his head in his hands, says that he is too excited. It's good that no one is here. Oh, what a shame. He wonders how to use it. He definitely gave that arrogant voice the name Lu. There's a red flash going on, and a balloon appears in the air in front of Kim Kai Kai, informing him that he has summoned Lu's disembodied ego. Kim Kai Kai exclaims in amazement that the ball tells him that Lu has no shape yet. Kim Kai Kai screams that he has succeeded. Lu says that due to the player's lack of skills, Lu's form will be randomly selected. To create an external shape, Lu randomly absorbs materials. Kim Kai Kai asks again about what is going on. He looks at the wind rising around him, asking what it means. Here strong gusts of wind rush towards Lu. Kim Kai Kai doesn't understand what's going on. Kim Gi Kai's backpack also rushes towards the sphere, but Kim Gi Kai holds it tightly. He can't miss the backpack. There are five pieces of contents there. Kim Kai Kai shouts at Lu to wait, saying that this is not allowed. Meanwhile, the sphere continues to absorb various materials. With Kim Kai Kai, all his clothes fly into the sphere, he tries to hold his remaining underpants with both hands. But then the wind died down. Kim Kai Kai is amazed to ask if it's over. At the same time, the ball shimmers with different colors. Red energy is pouring around him. A huge red vortex is rushing into the sky. Kim Kai Kai covers his eyes with his hand, protecting them from the light. But then he opens them in amazement. A sword hangs in the air, with the emblem of the eye on the hilt. Kim Kai Kai picked up a wool blanket. He asks the sword that he is Lu. The weapon responds, which is true. And why is he repeating the same thing like a dumbass? Kim Kai Kai asks himself to endure the taunts of the sword. He asks what the ego is. Kim Kai Kai suggests that this is something like a soul. Lu replies that it is wrong. Kim Kai Kai asks about what happened then. He takes the sword. Lu replies that he doesn't know. And he asks that Kim Kai Kai will grope him like that. Kim Kai Kai closes his eyes wearily. He asks Lu if he can move on his own. He replies that he can't yet, but later, most likely. Kim Kai Kai asks Lu if he can break the connection himself and change the owner. Lu replies that only the owner has a choice, the ego can't do that. Kim Kai Kai says that then he has the following question. Will Lu be able to harm him when he moves himself? Lu replies that he can attack. But if Kim Kai Kai dies, then the ego associated with him will die, so in practice this is impossible. Kim Kai Kai says that then he has one last question. Does Lu feel pain too? He answers, which is natural. He is a perfect ego, so he has all the emotions, and if you set him up, then the feelings. Here, an information window appears in front of Kim Kai Kai, asking if he wants to turn on Lu's pain sensations. Kim Kai Kai replies that manners make a person. He attacks the orc with the help of Lu and kills him. Lu absorbs the blood of an orc. He increases his level and his stats. Kim Kai Kai tells Lu that if you think about it, he's been wandering for a long time. He asks Lu if he is bored. Lu replies with a laugh that it's a shame to remember this. He still thinks about those times. Kim Kai Kai is amazed and asks Lu what. He says in a trembling voice that there is a good aura. He is glad that his master has such a good aura. Kim Kai Kai says his backpack is already full and that's enough for today. Lu tells the owner that it's so nice here. He replies that next time they will not go to the tower, but beyond the gate. Kim Kai Kai is told that it is not worth going beyond the gate yet. He asks why. Chi Shik Hyun tells him that four American rankers died there recently. They thought that there was an F rank gate, but it turned out to be a C rank. Recently, rescuers have increasingly discovered strange gates. This has not happened in 23 years. It started only a month ago. Kim Kai Kai thinks about the fact that he just met Lu a month ago, but he considers it a coincidence and calmly sips from the glass. Chi Shik Hyun tells him that he asks him never to go there at all. It's just better to avoid this place while it's dangerous. He understands his feelings, because now Kim Kai Kai can use his unique abilities, but he should be patient a little. He thanks Hyung. See Shik Hyun tells Tom that he did well today and can go home. He calls Kim Kai Kai the killer of the tutorial. He asks him not to call him that. Here crystals, special items, rewards for passing. You can earn more money behind the gate than in the tower. Kim Kai Kai thinks that T Shik Hyun is stopping him, but he can't do it any other way because of the loan debt. Kim Kai Kai is studying job vacancies thinking that it is all the more unlikely that he will run into a special gate. What could happen to him? He clicks on the vacancy and makes a call. Entrance to the cafe. Kim Kai Kai meets with Ha Song Su. 
who introduces himself to him as the leader of the team. He asks Kim Kai Kaiyu if this is the first time he will hunt for the gate. He replies that yes, but he's still learning strategy and stuff. Ha Sung Su hands Kim Kai Kai a contract. He says that it specifies the division of production, the fine, in general, the standard content. The equipment is determined by lot. Ha Sung Su continues by saying that the place is Guri Station. Kim Kai Kai is due to arrive the day after tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Of course, you can't be late. There are two types of gates. Disposable gates that disappear after they are clear, and a continuous gate where you can hunt over and over again. Unlike one-time gates, there is not so much reward in continuous ones. But they already know the capture strategy, so many go there because of the lower risks. If the team has finished checking the equipment, then it's time to leave. People are moving out. Kim Kai Kaiyu is among the other players. He looks at the others and realizes that everything that is happening looks like they are embarrassed. Maybe they also came to the announcement, like him. He looks back at the guy and the girl walking behind, who are talking to each other. He realizes that the two have already met. The guy feels something here. He raises his hand and tells the others to wait. A sound comes from the darkness ahead. The guy who stopped them pulls out the arrows and says they're coming. A huge crowd of monsters, with red burning eyes, similar to zombies, is running at them from the darkness. The guy shouts tank. The blonde man screams to eat and rushes forward with a shield. He stops the attack with a huge powerful shield. The next command is heard by the far shooter. Kim Kai Kai also rushes to the attack. Lu shouts at him that they need to kill everyone. The archer places an arrow glowing with blue energy. He shoots one of the monsters. The swordsman does not kill the monster with the first blow and screams at what the monster is so strong for. Then Kim Gikayo rushes past him. He deals with all the monsters at once literally with one blow, just rushing past them. The whole team looks in shock at the pieces of monsters flying at them. They are amazed by such an attack. Later, at a rest stop, the blonde man tells Kim Kai Kaiyu that thanks to that, they will quickly cope. The swordsman tells Kim Kai Kaiyu that he was saying that he said he was level 7. It feels like they're on a walk. Kim Kai Kaiyu replies with a smile that he was just lucky. They recall how Kim Kai Kaiyu defeated a huge monster, and they say that, to be honest, they coped with that boss thanks to them. The blonde man tells Kim Kai Kaiyu that when they're done, he should take him on his team. Kim Kai Kaiyu laughs. He thinks it doesn't seem to bother him much. But still, behaving like this in front of the leader is a bit not nice. He looks at their leader, the archer and the girl. The blonde man and the swordsman continue to thank and praise Kim Gi Kaiyu. The archer interrupts them, saying that they need to move out slowly. Kim Kai Kaiyu is thinking about whether Lu is ready. He replies to the owner that zombie blood is not tasty. He asks Lu to be patient. The boss's room will be here soon. The blonde man looks at Kim Kai Kaiyu. He starts whispering something in the swordsman's ear. They're both smiling. The whole team finds themselves in front of the boss's room. Kim Kai Kai looks at the huge iron bars and thinks about what they need to imprison the boss monster. The archer tells the team that he will tell the team how they will attack the keeper of the Talon gate. He starts by saying that he wants to say first that Talon is huge, but he is interrupted by the words Ah well. The blonde man scratches his ear and says that does the archer really think that they did not check the basic information in advance? Stop wasting time. It's time for them to go faster. The archer asks you to listen to him anyway. Beyond the gate, a mistake by one can endanger the entire team. The blonde man says that it really pisses him off. The girl in response to this looks at him in anger and her eyes light up red. The archer looks at her. She gives him an apologetic look. The archer says he will explain everything all over again. And Kim Kai Kai thinks that he just noticed something strange. First, with the help of a special solution, they will melt the iron bars and enter the boss's room. Next, they must climb onto Tolan's back. They are standing behind the ruined gate. Tolan turned out to be bigger than they thought. There is a huge monster in front of them. The archer attacks first. He strikes the monster with an explosive arrow. Others rush to attack. The monster should get angry and start waving his fists. The Song Byung Hoon tank must block the monster's blows. But Tolan hits him in the shield, and he flies away. At this point, the near and far arrows should deal as much damage as possible. And the most important moment is when Tolan cringes to change tactics. The monster sits down, bending over. At this point, Tolan's defensive powers increase threefold, and blows no longer work on him. But with an attack power like Kim Kai Kaiyu's, it's possible to do damage. He jumps, raising his sword to attack. He is informed that the degree of fusion with Lu is increasing. Now he can use Lu's power more effectively. He is struck, but strikes the monster. They destroyed the keeper of the Talon Gate. He gets experience points. His team stands open-mouthed in shock. He gets the skill cannibalism, restoring physical strength by eating a corpse. Someone shouts admiringly that Kim Kai Kaiyu destroyed Talon with a single blow. Tank Song Byung Hoon asks him to give him a number. The swordsman runs to them shouting that he needs it too. 
Kim Kai Kaio asks them to talk about it later. The archer is trying to get their attention. He says that a paralyzing dagger came out as an item of equipment. The swordsman screams that they have coped. They have also received an item. The leader replies that according to the contract, they will draw lots to divide the loot. Tank Song Byung who puts his hand on Kim Kai Kaio's shoulder and addresses him. He asks him if he wants to get the dagger. He tells Tom with a smile that, to be honest, he did everything alone. He and Dio will help him, but he just has to obey them. Kim Kai Kaiu thinks about Tank's words. After five years of working as a guide, he learned to see people. The long-range shooter Chi Dio and the Tank Song Byung Hoon. He had thoughts, but he didn't think they would behave like that. On the other hand, team leader Ha Song Su and a girl whose name he doesn't know. They sit in a circle, and Han Sung Su asks that if everyone is ready, then it's worth starting. Kim Kai Kai thinks that there is something else behind this calmness. Han Song Su takes out the dice. Ki Dio and Tank Song Byung Hoon look at each other. They grab their weapons and rush forward. The tank rushes with a sword at Han Song Su, but he is stopped by Kim Gi Kai. He knocks the attacker down and pins him to the ground. He angrily asks Kim Kai Kai if they are not at the same time. He says that if his opponent moves, he can kill him. Tank asks Do to do something. He trembles in fear and disowns him. Kim Kai Kai realizes that his actions were dangerous. Just a little more and the tank died. He shouts that this is a joke, he was just joking. It's not the leader Ha Song Su, but this tank. He looks at the girl clutching a dagger. Her eyes are burning and darkness swirls around her. Kim Kai Kai did not even see the dagger in his hands. He understands that she is dangerous. And Ha Sung Su too. He didn't even flinch when the knife was pointed at him. On the contrary, he was looking at the blade. He asks the couple about who they are. Ha Sung Su replies that he would like to ask Kim Kai Kai. He asks what they will do with these. Dio says he was told he would be paid if he obey. He didn't know that he was going to harm Han Sung Su. The archer asks about why Kim Kai Kai is asking him this, to which he replies that he is, after all, an interested party. Han Song Su is talking about something. He addresses the girl, Ha Rim. Darkness begins to envelop her. Kim Kai Kai's eyes widen in fright. In the blink of an eye, she sweeps towards Dio and attacks him. Kim Kai Kai realizes that he correctly understood that she was dangerous. He knocks out Sun Byung Hoon's tank, and getting up, he says that he will take the dagger. Han Song Su asks why. Kim Kai Kai replies that he saved their lives and seems to deserve it. The archer replies that this is an exaggeration. Kim Kai Kai asks that such an item does not mean anything to Han Song Su. Han Song Su asks Kim Kai Kai if he knows who he is. Kim Kai Kai replies that judging by the fact that he has such a guard, he is not an ordinary person, but he doesn't care about that. He doesn't want to know who they are, nor to spread rumors about them. Kim Kai Kai says that let them deal with those two players themselves, he still needs to hunt here. Lu tells him that this Ha Rim is dangerous. Kim Kai Kai tells him that he knows this, so he only talks. Maybe I should have run away. Lu says that Kim Kai Kai knows that they are dangerous, but you tell them to deal with the rest. He also took the item for himself. But Kim Kai Kai saved their lives. But now he can hunt a lot. He asks Lu about how it feels like a second heart has appeared. Lu tells the host once again that zombie blood doesn't taste good. Kim Kai Kai says he's coming out. Moreover, there are no more zombies, and he has absorbed enough blood. Lu absorbs stats through the blood. Goblins have agility, orcs have strength, and zombies have physical strength. Therefore, stats are higher than your own level. Kim Kai Kai tells Lu that they should finally enter the reward room. The reward room is a gray space that can be moved using the corpse of a gatekeeper. That is, literally, this is the room where the reward for attacking the gate is given. Kim Kai Kai asks Lu if it has already been here, referring to the glowing drawing on the wall. He replies that he does not. He walks up to the wall and knocks on it. It seems to be empty inside. He suggests to Lu to break the wall. He agrees with such a plan. Kim Kai Kai swings. And then Lu asks him to wait. But the guy already hits the wall, destroying it. Dust is flying around. Kim Kai Kai asks Lu what he said. He responds to the ego. He feels the ego here. Kim Kai Kai is amazed that there is an ego in such a place. Bright light streams from the broken wall. Kim Kai Kai asks that such a thing is possible. Is ego such a common thing? What had he been doing for the past five years? Lu tells him that his master is just a little dumb. He interrupts the sword with the question of what? Lu replies that it's nothing. The master needs to look for the ego here. Kim Kai Kai coughs due to the amount of dust. He says that these gates are quite old. He doubts that there is anything hidden left. Lu tells him that there is an ego here. It is a luminous white sword with a blue crystal on the hilt. Kim Kai Kai approaches the sword stuck in the stone, asking about the Excalibur in front of him. He asks about the fact that he just needs to grab it. He wraps his arms around the sword. The crystal lights up with light. Bright light begins to flood the whole neighborhood. Kim Kai Kai is asked if he is his master. 
He gets into a pure white space. He realizes that this is similar to the moment when he met Lu, but the feeling is a little different. He asks what the ego inside the sword is in front of him. He is told that yes, he was waiting for his master here and they are asking if his question will be answered. Kim Kai Kai replies that he is not the master of the ego, but wants to become one. He is told that then the ego must be given a name. He names Ego, L. Now his name will be L. Kim Kai Kai stands with a glowing sword in his hands. The second time is a little clearer. Then his eyes widen in surprise. The ceiling of the cave above him begins to collapse. Lu shouts at the owner to run, and stones begin to fall from above. L also tells the owner that he needs to run. He covers his head with his hands, shouting that he knows this. Lu asks L who he is. In response, he hears a question about who he is. Lu says he's a great ego. Kim Kai Kai asks both of them to shut up. He runs to Tolan's body and realizes that he needs to go to the reward room. Then Kim Kai Kai realizes that the floor is also starting to collapse. He runs as fast as he can to the body of the gatekeeper and holds out his hand. He is asked if he wants to move to the reward room. He screams faster. Then Kim Kai Kai notices a huge eye of fire, standing in front of the portal. People are discussing that the continuous gate has disappeared. This is unprecedented. The reason is unknown. The appearance of unusual gates and mysterious incidents have caused great controversy. Kim Kai Kai is thinking about whether it's good or bad, but he was above suspicion since they disappeared some time after he left there. The reward for completing 30 purple crystals and a guardian amulet. This is a valuable thing that even ordinary people can use to prevent mild diseases and increase vitality. It may not cure his mother, but it will help financially and he will be able to worry less about paying for treatment if he sells the crystals. And he began to climb the tower again. Tower, fifth floor. Kim Kai Kai looks around in amazement. Of course, he had heard about the development of the citadel, since there are no monsters on the test floor. But it's a whole city. He overcame the fifth floor, where he was found unconscious. He overcame the sixth floor, defeating all the monsters. He overcame the seventh floor, defeating all the enemies. He also overcame the eighth floor. And then, he was on the ninth floor with two swords in his hands. Not so long ago, he dared not even dream of such a thing. He remembers the words that were said to him that, to tell the truth, they are not so important. If he doesn't give up, then someday he will definitely be able to unleash his unique abilities. Kim Kai Kai realizes that Snok Wu was right. There are two rings on his finger, glowing white and red. He looks at them with a smile, realizing that the ale level has also increased decently. Perhaps due to the separation of experience points, leveling up is a bit slow, but thanks to the merger, he really feels that he has become stronger. He thought it was also because he had a sealed demon with him. However, this sword, in which it had been sealed for a long time, had lost all its power. Maybe that giant eye was a demon. Kim Kai Kai realized that the stronger the ego, the stronger he is. He studies the information window with the characteristics of the L. He's level 8. Kim Kai Kai realizes that he needs to find another ego. Liu asks about what is where to look. Kim Kai Kai replies that he knows a place. Auction of items. From the podium, a man shouts about what has been sold for 170 million won. Kim Kai Kai asks Liu if he feels anything. He says no. L doesn't feel anything either. Kim Kai Kai thinks this is logical. Ego is not often found. And then the last lot for today is announced. The main item of today's auction is a bracelet of wounds. This is the very thing that dramatically increases the recovery rate. Liu and L say it's ego. Kim Kai Kai is startled to ask again. In the evening, Kim Kai Kai walks through the streets of the city. He says he didn't know that the auction was such a difficult thing. It was too expensive. L replies that there is nothing to be done. It was the main subject. Lu adds, saying that the owner is a beggar. Kim Kai Kai laughs, saying that, on the other hand, he managed to sell a paralyzing dagger for almost a hundred million. He laughs. Lu says the owner has a strange face. Kim Kai Kai says we should kiss Lu and L. Lu replies that the owner is crazy. Kim Kai Kai comes out of the supermarket. He is talking on the phone, saying that he is already on his way home. He has no problems. But after thinking about it, he says that there is one. It's hard for him to find a team. He was outside the gate recently. The players hurt his head more than the monsters. And they start shouting into his phone that he was outside the gate. He was told to be careful. He takes the phone away from his ear, wincing. He says it was F rank. He continues by saying that his interlocutor knows that without equipment he is only the first level. And he can't get the rank of a player, so he can't make a strategy alone. He knows that there is no other way. He is told not to forget to put down his name in honor of the promotion. Kim Kai Kai says he doesn't mind advancing in the tower, but Lu needs blood, and progress is too slow there. Besides, there was a good income at the gate last time. He exhales, thinking that everything will work out somehow. To begin with, he resolved urgent matters. I could even buy beef. Kim Kai Kai happily looks at his purchases. L tells him that he had such a lot of money in his hands, he is so simple-minded. 
Lu says it's called stingy. Kim Kai Kaiyu asks Lu that no one has raised him for a long time. Lu apologizes. Anyway, Kim Kai Kaiyu wants to make money faster and move out of here, so that Yu John can walk on safer roads. Something is catching Kim Kai Kaiyu's attention here. He sees a bright ball in the air. Blue energy begins to glow from the ball. This opens a huge portal. Kim Kai Kaiyu realizes that the gates have just opened in front of him. A memo appears. What to do when the gate appears? Don't be scared. Immediately after the gate appears, it is not dangerous. You need to call 112 or the association and stay put. It is not necessary to enter the gate. It is dangerous to enter the gate of an unknown level. If a player enters the gate without confirmation of the association, he can be sentenced to imprisonment for up to 5 years or a fine of up to 10 million won. The third rule is impeccable evidence. If unnecessary witnesses are confirmed before the association confirms the location of the gate, disputes may arise. If a person discovered the gate alone, then it is necessary to preserve the evidence. The first person to discover the gate is given priority to attacking the gate with the right to resell. The head of the gate management department says we'll see about it. He clicks the mouse. He is looking through information about the appearance of new gates near the house of Gikai. He decides to look up the applicant's name. And he chokes on his coffee. He shouts Kim Gikayu's name. The other employees look at the door in shock. The man says that if Kim Kai Kaiyu does not enter the gate within five days, then the priority right to attack may go to auction. He should also take all the precautions that he was told about earlier. He is thanked once again for the prompt request. Then the boss of the employee who spoke comes in. The boss turns to Kim Kai Kaiyu saying that he needs to talk to him. He is ready to listen to Haiyan. They go to a good coffee. A glass of coffee is hung with tubes, which is not particularly sweet. T. Shik Hyun drinks coffee. He slams the glass down on the table, causing his badge to bounce. He asks Kim Kai Kaiyu that he will go there himself, since the gate is F-ranked. I am confident in my abilities. He replies with a smile that yes, he knows. He has become much stronger than he thinks. T. Shik Hyun says he only knows that Kim Kai Kaiyu is very stubborn. He asks what floor he's on. Kim Kai Kaiyu replies that he is on the 11. He just passed the 10th floor today. T. Shik Hyun asks about the level, to which his interlocutor replies that he knows. T. Shik Hyun has been talking for four days. What is striking about Kim Kai Kaiyu? He asks him to prepare everything in four days and then come to him. He asks why. T. Shik Hyun replies that he wants to see if he can be sent there. If he doesn't prepare well, he won't let him go anywhere. Four days later, Kim Kai Kai wonders, looking at the weapons, that there was such a place in the basement of the department. This is a training room, although it is not used now. He looks around, assessing the wide space, a protective elephant on the walls. He underestimated the association. T. Shik Hyun asks about what he likes. He asks what it is. He is told that the offer to join the association. T. Shik Hyun says that now Kim Kai Kai can join it not as an employee. He thanks me for the offer, but says he'll probably refuse. He doesn't want to commit himself yet. T. Shik Hyun replies that he will be glad at any time if he changes his mind. Kim Gikayu asks about Theo. After all, when Hyun became the head, the conductor department was removed. It seems that Theo has joined the Carbon Guild. His expression had already changed, as if he had become a different person. Kim Kai Kaiyu says it's good and we should call him sometime. This is the first time he has heard of such a guild. Kim Kai Kaiyu asks Oh Hyun that he also wanted to train, but did not bring a weapon. He rolls up his sleeves and asks what. T. Shik Hyun scratches his cheek and asks if Kim Kai Kaiyu seems to underestimate him. Does he really think that he only works in the office? He attacks Kim Kai Kai with ease. He opens his eyes wide in amazement. And then the flow of energy stops with his hands. T. Shik Hyun says he's still good. He should not look down on a top ranker. Lu tells Kim Kai Kai to stop shaking and attack. Black energy begins to swirl around Hyun. Kim Kai Kai realizes that he will not be able to win this fight. He says he has a lot to learn. And he thinks to himself that he won't just stand there either. The rings on his hand begin to glow. His eyes widen in amazement. He summons Lu and L. Two swords materialize in his hand at once. He tries to attack T. Shin Hyun, but he easily deflects his attack. Kim Kai Kai flies back to Earth. His opponent asks him if he has prepared properly. Kim Kai Kai understands that the top rankers are different after all. He remembered the juice of Yu. T. Shin Hyun shouts at Kim Kai Kai to pull himself together. If he gets distracted outside the gate, he'll die right away. He understands that his opponent is right. He's been overconfident all this time. He clenches his teeth with determination, thinking that however, he did not come empty-handed either. Four days earlier, he was at the game item market on Dong Dimun. Lu asks him why he needs these items. He tells the owner that there is probably no equipment better than theirs. Kim Kai Kai pretends to be on the phone. He says that's not the point. After all, he has weak protective equipment. He can't walk around with that. Maybe he'll find an ego. Al tells the owner that if it appears, 
He will immediately tell about it. Kim Kai Kaiyu says it's great and worth seeing what's here. He pays attention to the protective armor. This is the metal armor of an inept blacksmith. They increase their defensive powers by 9. Kim Kai Kaiyu looks at the price of the items being sold. And his eyes open in shock when he sees the price tag of 3 billion won. The other armor of the inept blacksmith increases the defensive power by 7. And costs 1 billion 300 million won. Kim Kai Kaiyu is sitting on a bench, contrite. He's upset that he doesn't have any money. Lu and Il don't know what to tell him. Kim Kai Kaiyu says that cheap is too bad and good is too expensive. Still, it's not easy. Lu and El are calling him. He looks at the boy arguing with the man. The boy shouts that his grandfather is, by the way, a great master. They ask him what is so great about an outfit that doesn't even have information about the item. The boy replies that it can't be. His grandfather is really good at it. They ask him what is the point of advertising a store in which trade is not really going on. They'll send him away anyway. The boy is very upset by such words. Here Kim Kai Kaiyu addresses him. He turns to him. Kim Kai Kaiyu asks if the boy can take him to his grandfather's shop. The boy is amazed by this. He shouts with joyful eyes that yes, of course. Kim Kai Kaiyu follows the boy. He asks Lu and El if their information is accurate. They both reply to their master that it is so. They have no doubts. Lu says that even the boy's clothes are all ego. El says it's artificial, but it has the power of the ego. Lu is unhappy since he was going to say it. The boy opens the door, joyfully shouting grandfather, informing Tom that he has brought a visitor. The grandfather replies to his grandson Min Su that he told him not to bring anyone. Min Su says he wants everyone to know how amazing his grandfather is. Grandpa tells Tom that his grandson has a lot of beautiful clothes. Why he wears his name. If his father sees him, he will punish him. Kim Kai Kai understands that there is a smell of good objects here. Lu is amazed. El says that's all. All that is in this shop is ego. El says he can't be like a human. Lu says it's all just halves. Egos that don't have a self. Information windows appear everywhere about the level of the surrounding objects. Kim Kai Kai asks if I'm not an ego in English. The old man tells him that there are no suitable items for him here, so let him leave. He won't understand their value anyway, and he doesn't want to sell these things. This is H. Wang Dai, call the blacksmith. He says that how much can you deal with those who have a veil over their eyes? Kim Kai Kaiyu says he's buying. H. Wang Dai Call is amazed. He says he doesn't sell things. Anyway, people like him don't even know how to use such things. Kim Kai Kaiyu asks that if he can use things, then they will be sold to him. H. Wang Dai Call replies that stop talking nonsense. He can look around here and then let him go. Kim Kai Kaiyu says about one item that it's called a nameless sword. Level 79, Stats. The old man is very impressed by this. He shouts to Kim Kai Kai that he really sees the abilities of this sword. He replies that of course, and asks that the old man sees them too. H. Wang Dai Call is amazed by this. He tells the guy to try it once. He continues by saying that allowing someone to use a tool who understands its value is the blacksmith's greatest wish. Kim Kai Kai takes the sword. He tells the weapon that his name is now Spearhead. H. Wang Dai Call is in shock. His grandson is also amazed. Kim Kai Kaiyu silently looks at the sword, he is upset. El says it seems the sword didn't like the name. Kim Kai Kaiyu asks about why when he returns the weapon to its place. The action returns to the training room. Kim Kai Kaiyu stands with a gun in his hands in front of T. Shin Hai. His eyes light up red. He quickly rushes into the attack. Streams of energy emanate from El and Lu, leaving light behind. Kim Kai Kaiyu approaches his opponent. He swings for a punch. His opponent easily deflects the attack. He shouts to Kim Kai Kai that he sees a hesitation on the edge of the sword. He needs to use all his strength and aim at vital organs. Does Kim Kai Kai really think he can scratch him that way? He realizes that his opponent is a former top ranker. He needs to focus. He lunges again, trying to hit Lu. Then he takes a swing at L. Over and over, Kim Kai Kai repeats his attempts to hurt T. Shin Hai. But no matter how much he tries, his opponent gets away from the attack from time to time. Then Kim Kai Kai notices his opponent's fist rushing in his direction. Kim Kai Kai stands with his sword raised and looks at the attack preparing against him. Kim Kai Kai looks at the thing in his hands, not understanding why it is not possible to establish a connection. There's definitely an ego in front of him. Lu tells him that these subjects are secondary. Who is this ego is very picky in choosing a host. Lu continues, saying that he and L had no other choice, but do not think that this is the case with everyone. L says he likes the owner. Kim Kai Kai decides to take the next item, saying he will try again. Lu asks him to drop the case. He names the next item after Brunhart. A bright light appears here. He receives a notification that he has established a connection with Ego Brunhart. Kim Kai Kai happily shouts that he has succeeded. There is also a notification that he lacks the ability to communicate as a partner, so he cannot use all of Brunhart's abilities. Most of his abilities are lost. Brunhart is level 7. 
He is level 7, strength 15, dexterity 3, physical strength 40, magical power 6, skills, transformation into accessories, reflection, protection power 12. See Shin Hai and attacks Kim Kai Kaiyo. Brunhart reflects the accumulated damage. Kim Kai Kaiyo flies away in amazement. Then T. Shin Hyun throws a bottle to Kim Kai Kai lying on the floor and tells him to drink it. It's a potion for internal injuries. Kim Kai Kai says he doesn't understand why such an expensive thing is in such a bottle. T. Shin Hyun tells him that he has passed. He shows his scratched fist, saying that he did not think that Tom would really succeed. This is not an accident, but an elaborate plan. He really underestimated Kim Kai Kai. T. Shin Hyun asked about what it was. Kim Kai Kai says that his subjects are natural. If the gate is not cleared within one week from today, the association will send its agents there. T. Shin Hyun wishes Kim Kai Kai good luck in the sweep. He says he's giving him five days instead of a week. If he doesn't come out, he'll come in and pull it out without any agents. Kim Kai Kai says it won't be necessary. T. Shin Hyun replies that it is cheaper than paying the association's staff. They are discussing whether Kim Kai Kai took everything with him. Lu says that the level of the gate is similar to those where there are zombies and what is the concern. Kim Kai Kai thinks that T. Shin Hyun is like a father to him, that's why he worries. He's going to go through the gate. Kim Kai Kai enters the gate, thinking that if only they were continuous. He explains to Lu that you can earn more money in such gates. Lu asks about how to understand continuous gates or not. Kim Kai Kai replies that they need to be cleaned up first. He says that the gate has an F rank. If it is not a difficult type of tower, dungeon or maze, then he will be able to pass everything quickly. He summons Lu and kills the wolf. He pierces the monster's mouth with a sword. A lot of animals with burning eyes are approaching him from the darkness. Kim Kai Kaiyu smiles, saying it's time to level up. 